Anglo-Saxon houses and settlements. Before the Anglo-Saxons arrived in Britain, the Romans had built big towns with fancy villas. When the Romans left Britain in 410, the Roman way of life was destroyed with it. In fact, many of the great buildings that the Romans built in Britain were soon left in ruins. By the time the Anglo-Saxons arrived, it looked as though Britain had gone back in time. When they got to Britain, the Anglo-Saxons didn't just go for the fancy stone houses left behind by the Romans. Instead, they did their own thing. They found suitable land, often by a river, and cut down the trees to make some space. The wood from the trees was then used to build with and also used for fuel. They built brand new villages near rivers and forests. They found that the British countryside had everything they needed food, water and wood to build and heat their homes. Unfortunately, this brought about things they definitely didn't need, like sheep-eating wolves and wild boars. The villagers soon solved that problem though by building high fences around their villages. Sometimes Anglo-Saxons built houses inside some of the old Roman walled towns, as they would offer a good defense. The land around each village was shared out between all the families that lived there. In each village there was a group of huts for every family. There needed to be enough space for mom, dad, kids, grandma, grandpa, auntie and uncle. Different huts were bedrooms, workshops or storehouses and there was one big hut in the middle of each hut group which was a dining room for the whole family. Archaeologists have found out that Anglo-Saxon homes were wooden huts with a straw thatched roof. The houses were very open planned and the whole family lived together, ate together, slept together and socialized together. Animals were usually kept at the end of the room. The houses were made from wood, a sturdy timber frame covered with wooden planks to make the walls. Sometimes a different type of wall was created using sticks woven together with mud and straw packed into the gaps. This type of wall, called a wattle wall, kept the huts warm and dry-ish. Of course, the huts also needed roofs which were thatched with straw and reeds. They mainly had one room and sparse furniture. They would have furniture such as a loom for making clothing and fabrics, buckets for collecting water and various clay pots to store food and items. Sometimes benches were used to sit on, however most of the time people sat on the floor. They also had animal skins or tapestries on the walls for warmth. They often had a central fire for cooking and heating. Houses were sunken because they dug them into the ground. Windows were rare, they were just simple huts with one door. Some houses had narrow slits, which let wind and light into the house. Very different from the grand architectural buildings the Romans built. The chief of the village got the biggest house, but he had to share it with all his warriors. Yes, sir. Plus, sometimes, the oxen. Now, that must have been smelly. The building was long and thin with small windows, a big fire and a hole in the top for the smoke to escape. The chief's house was more decorated than the others, with hunting trophies and battle armor hung all along the walls. Welcome 